thy strong arm, part of the sure defense, thy true religion in our hearts increase, thy bounteous goodness nourish us in peace. Thy people on their toilsome way. Lead us from night to never ending day. Fill all our lives with love and grace divine. And glory, love, and praise be ever I would like to invite the children forward. Good morning, good morning. Oh, we have all girls. Oh, and a boy today. Oh, good, good, good. Come on down. Hi, everybody. Come on down. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. It's so good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Yeah. So, right now, what we're practicing is sitting still, right, for some of us, and others of us will talk about the lesson. <gasps> Friends, oh my goodness, will you look at something with me? Will you see how beautiful these orange leaves are for fall? Aren't they so pretty? I love them. I think I, aren't they pretty? Yeah. They're decorations for fall. And I think that I would like to decorate my house for fall. Wouldn't it be nice to have some beautiful fall decorations in our house? Yeah. Oh my goodness, look at these flowers right here. Those would be perfect for our house, wouldn't they? Do you see them? I want these flowers. I, whose flowers are these flowers? They're yours, Vinny? They're Vinny's flowers, and he, he likes them too. Vinny, are you using those flowers? You're not using them? Can I have them? No. No? <laughs> but I want those flowers for my house. Do you, do you like the flowers? Mine. They're yours. Uh, but, but I want them. <laughs> I want them. Hey, Vinny, look over there. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I really want those flowers for my house. You know, Vinny told me his favorite color is green. That's not even his favorite color. That's my favorite color. Shouldn't I have those flowers? I thought you liked purple. <laughs> <laughs> Will you work with me here? <laughs> Second favorite is, is yellow, orange. For the, anyway. I think that I want them, and I think Vinny's not using them. They're on the floor. Do you think that I can take them? No. Me. Do you think I could take those flowers because I like them better and Vinny isn't even using them? You could buy some on the store. Um, <laughs> well, you could try. William, do you think I can take those enough. flowers? I want to take those flowers because I really like them. Hey, Vin, look over there. Uh -oh. <laughs> now they're mine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to put them right here because they really are very pretty. Vinny, I'll give them right back. Did I do the right thing? No. <laughs> no, I did not do the right thing because I stole these flowers. And I had lots of reasons for it. I like them more. I will use them. Vinny does not appreciate them. Right, it's my favorite. Oh, meaningful glare between sisters. Hmm. I don't know, but I'm noticing. <laughs> but I did not do the right thing. We should not take things that are not ours even if we feel like we deserve them, even if we feel like we like them better, even if we feel like the person won't notice, we should not take things that are not ours. That's what the adults are talking about this morning. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Can you hold out ten fingers? Show me ten fingers. Ten. Ten fingers. Ten commandments. And one of them says, do not steal. So, okay, fine, Vinny. You can have your flowers back. There you go. All right, so today there is Sunday school. There is also nursery time with Miss Becca. So let's have a word of prayer. God, can you help us be people who are honest and who do not take things that are not ours? 
We know this is a lesson we start to learn when we're about two, and we keep learning until we're 102, God. So work with each of us. I ask that you watch over these kids, keep them safe and healthy, and teach them how much you love them. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, thank you for coming. Good sitting. They all stayed the whole time. Usually there's escapees, you know, running away. So that was really good. Keep the high five. Oh, and it's small collision. <laughs> bye bye. All right. Oh, I'm going to sit down here this morning, Robin. Excuse me. Excuse me. Never mind me. Robin Wilson has our scripture lesson today. Just wait. A pulpit mic. Good morning. There we go. Hello, I'm Robin Wilson, and it's good to be with everyone on this beautiful fall morning. We have two readings this morning, the first from Exodus and the second from the Gospel of Matthew. Exodus chapter 20, verse 15, you shall not steal, and from Matthew 25, chapters 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as the shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it we saw that you were hungry and gave you food when you were thirsty and gave you something to drink? When was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or, or naked and gave you clothing? When was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did to one of the least, one of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at the left hand, You will be accursed. Depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick in the prison and we did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into the eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Good morning. Please pray with me. Gracious God, today help us to see the dignity of all human beings and to renew our commitment to their well-being. Fill us with the joy of our faith so that with our eyes always on you and our hearts filled with your grace, we may learn to give rather than to take. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Prince of Peace. Amen. So there's a Facebook page I follow. It's the Bangor Police Department page. It's a pretty fun page for a small police department. They have over 330,000 followers on Facebook. They, um, the page was maintained by a now retired lieutenant, Tim Cotton, and it's actually really a wonderful peek into police life. And he shared good stories, bad stories, but the way that he always signed off on each post was what I liked most, is keep your hands to yourself, 
leave other people's things alone, and be kind to one another. Which are good words, especially from a police perspective, I would imagine. The violation of all of those words is what keeps them really busy. And it seemed to apply as I was thinking about today's message to stealing, really each of those things. I thought, okay, don't steal, I'll apply those words, come up with some stealing examples. Keep your hands to yourself, don't touch other people's things, and be kind. We read about theft all the time, and all kinds of levels, local level, national, international, and people don't really listen to the Bangor PD's words when they violate them. Leave other people's things alone. Has anyone ever been the victim of any kind of theft just by a show of hands? Yeah, so a lot of people in this room. There's your wallet, your purse, your home, your car, maybe your bank account, credit card, your identity. And you can feel, after that, very violated, very vulnerable, maybe afraid. Um, in 1999, the apartment I was living in was broken into. I came home from work to find out someone had broken in. They did not, I didn't have a lot of valuable things, a little bit of money, less than $100, some jewelry that belonged to my grandmother, so it was very sentimental. But it, it wasn't those things. It was, well, her things going was, made me sad, but it was how violated I felt. Somebody felt like they could come into my house, take out my screen when I had a cat in the house, so I was lucky she didn't get out. But I, I also, it also made me really afraid. It made me afraid for the longest time to go out at night because I didn't want to come back to a dark apartment. I would leave lights on when I went to work in the morning, and it just really left me afraid, vulnerable. So as we continue our countdown of the Ten Commandments, we're checking in at number eight is you shall not steal. And just as a reminder, if you're not sure on the whole list, you can check out Exodus chapter 20 and the whole list is there. If you can't name them all, check out Exodus chapter 20. So as I was preparing for a message, I really thought that I had it down. Don't steal. I'll come up with examples, like I said, of theft or violation. And it wasn't until I reread the scripture, especially from Matthew, and I read our resource. And I know Pastor Rachel has referenced we're using a resource for this. And it helped open my eyes. And I saw that I really was missing out on the point of this commandment. It actually stops kind of short, too. It doesn't give us enough guidance about what to do. You shall not steal what? Anything? Material things? Um, maybe as an offshoot, you have psychological or, or physical issues. I didn't really think about it much further. Don't steal, and I stopped at material belongings. And in the resource, I read that the requirement really expands to respect for belongings and the well-being of others. So to make that connection, don't take their things. But we also have to add in the do's. Everything we is a don't, we should have some sort of balance with what we will do. Don't take people's things. But do make sure that they maybe they have what they need. How often are we reminded to check on our neighbors who might be older or infirm or alone? Before pandemic, sure. During storms, during heat waves, we were reminded to check on our neighbors. But during pandemic, yes, check on them carefully, but people were alone and needed to be cared for. How about now? Are we not taking things, but are we making sure that we have balance are we checking in on each other, taking care of each other? In our scripture from Matthew, we have Jesus helping the goats, the non-followers, to understand what they need to do and how very simple it is. Lord, when was it when we saw you hungry and didn't help you, didn't feed you? And he says to them, I tell you, just as you did not do it to the least of these people who needed help, you didn't help me, it's the same. Anyone who needs help is me needing help, and you didn't help me. And it's very simple. If someone needs help, help them. 
If you're not helping anyone, you're not helping me. It's the same. I am them. They are me. We are the same. It's very simple. Keep your hands to yourself. Leave other people's things alone. Be kind. So as we go to the question of the day, are you kind? And I think we should all be able to answer, yeah, I'm kind most of the time. I try very hard to be kind a lot of the time. I think I'm doing it. I don't take other people's things, and I help those who need it, just as Jesus told me to do. I'm kind. But how about in those moments when we are not kind? Maybe with our words, or our actions, or any kind of lack thereof. What are you stealing, you might ask me. D, you're not making the connection. The connection is, how about someone's dignity? How about someone's right to feel safe from harm, or from gossip, or a lack of care, or lack of caring? That's what we're taking from people when we are not helping them, when we are not kind to them. We're taking the basic human right they have to dignity. How about not praying when we say we will? How about someone says, I'll pray for you. Check that box. I said I'll pray for them. Are we praying for them? How about when we don't use the power of our prayers? When I lead worship, I always add in, you know, we, everyone does it differently. When we get to the prayers of the pastoral prayer and the prayers of the people, I always add in to pray for those who have no one to pray for them. There's nothing more powerful that we can do to pray for someone who hasn't asked us, who is, we're not benefiting from that prayer at all. We don't always have to start our prayers with please. If then, we can pray for someone who doesn't have anything and use our power. We're giving them a gift, giving them their dignity, not taking away an opportunity to help someone else just with our prayers, with our thoughts, with our basic caring for each other. A member of our Wednesday book group, Patty, um, and her husband, Peter, for a long time um, were part of a homeless ministry in Boston, and I have never met two people who were more caring. And I know for myself, there are people I might walk away from or I might be afraid of, these are the people that they couldn't get to fast enough. The people who are treated as if they are not human people. And if we don't care for those people, the least among us, that's Jesus we're not caring from. Those are his words from Matthew. So I want to ask you to chew on this command as an opportunity to look at each other in new ways. Think about what we take when we're not giving. Think about new ways to be kind. Keep your hands to yourself. Leave other people's things alone and be kind to one another. Amen. Thank you, Dee. Thank you, Dee. You know, it occurred to me while you were preaching, Jesus separating the, the sheep and the goats. This is off topic. But now in this modern generation, when we say someone's a goat, that's a great thing, right? Greatest of all time. And we say they're sheep, that's a bad thing. In Jesus' time, it was exactly the opposite. <laughs> but we get the idea. I love that. Stealing dignity and stealing kindness. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have a responsive song, and then we'll move to announcements. Thou shalt not steal nor yet defraud Thy fellow men of what they claim This breaking the law of God And brings on Or the next song? All right. Yes. We 
we give thee but thine own. Whatever the gift may be, all that we have is thine alone. To trust, O oh God, from as to words to receive, and gladly as thou blessest us to thee our first fruits give. The captive to release, to God the lost to bring. To teach the way of life and peace, it is a Christ like me. And we believe thy word, though dim our faith may be, wonderful. Check, check. They're, oh, that's why. Jeff, I'm getting in your way. <laughs> we just gave Jeff a hand. Uh, we've appreciated for years uh, the work that Bobby Pierce has done on the soundboard with the old equipment and knowing all the curveballs that come into the uh, worship service and appreciate Jeff this morning for doing that as well. Okay, some announcements for you. Hey, uh, first, don't let me forget, uh, this is a time of offering. There is a donation link in the comments. Uh, also, please, if you have any prayer requests, this is a last call for those prayer requests to go into the pastoral prayer. Uh, thank you for your donations to the church. If you're here in the building, there is an offering plate in the foyer. So we have got a fun thing coming up. Try this one on for size. We're making, do you all know what a word cloud is? A word cloud? Like if I were to say uh, uh, Bob Kingsley, for example, and everyone says, oh, I've got a word to describe Bob Kingsley, and everyone adds their list of words, we can make a cloud of words, like a, a, we could put his name in the middle, and all the words will surround Bob, and the ones that appear more, like if people say wonderful, for example, Bob, which is an obvious one, the word wonderful gets larger and larger. But if it said um, silly, maybe only one person said that, and so the word is very small. Yeah, have you seen a word cloud like that? And so you get a sense of the characteristic or the makeup of whatever subject you're making a word cloud. We're making an Aldersgate word cloud, and we're going to turn that into a t-shirt about all the things that we love about this church, uh, either the activities that we do together or the characteristics of the people of the church. So if you are here in the building, uh, on the coffee hour table, there is a basket with pieces of paper. Will you please write down a word that describes Aldersgate or an activity that you love to do here? And we're going to create the Aldersgate word cloud. If you're at home, please put it in the comments and we'll pick those up uh, after the broadcast is over. So we're going to make that into a t-shirt and we're going to wear the t-shirt on a very special event coming up in three weeks from today called the Walk for Aldersgate. This is the walk for the things we love about Aldersgate, the community, the coffee hour, I see coffee coming, the music, the kindness, the joy, the Sunday school, the main mission trip, the breakfast, whatever it is that you love about this place, that's what we are walking for. It is a fundraiser walk. So just like with all sorts of walks and runs, we'll ask our friends to help support us. And at the same time, we'll be telling our friends, 
These are the things that I love about my church. This is what Aldersgate means to me. So it's a community fundraiser, and we're going to be walking on a Sunday morning. And so that means we'll come here, we'll sing a song, uh, we'll steal flowers from Vinny. Um, no, I will stop that, Vinny. Um, and then we'll go on a walk around Ipswich River Park and hopefully raise some good money for this church that we love so much. The date is October 16th, three weeks from today. So you'll see more about it in the church newsletter. We're going to generate that word cloud. We're going to start creating those t-shirts. And I think it's going to be a wonderful community building time, something fun to do together. I think I've just decided we should also have a huge, wonderful coffee hour when we get back so we can spend time perhaps warming up. It may be cold, right? Warming up a little bit and visiting with one another and just saying thank you, God, uh, for this great community and all of its activities. So keep an eye out for that and tell me uh, your word for the word cloud. I think we'll put a cap on that of this evening. Like, so first thing tomorrow morning, we'll grab all the words we get. So the cutoff is tomorrow morning about 8 o'clock. That's Monday morning. Okay. Thank you for sending in prayer requests. Ooh. Ooh, before I get there, um, we are doing an annual event, the Blessing of the Pets, a week from today. This is the Sunday closest to the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi uh, at 2 p.m. right out here in the parking lot. It's a very brief but very wonderful service where people bring their pets and just receive a quick blessing, a word of gratitude to God for animal companionship. During that event, we take a collection that goes directly to the Northeast Animal Shelter, uh, which is a no-kill shelter in Salem, Mass., uh, so we invite you to come for that, too. The Blessing of the Pets next Sunday at 2 p.m. Okay. Now we can move to prayer requests. Yep. Um, Chrissy Kennedy, Eagle, is today oh, that's wonderful. We'll put that in the joys, if I can remember when I get there. My problem with prayer requests is I, I just get to a different place when I'm praying, and sometimes I don't remember. So Chrissy Tenney, a friend of the church, is receiving her Eagle Scout today. Oh, her project is today, is doing her Eagle Scout project. Okay, hopefully I will remember. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we do thank you for this community, for all the things that make it wonderful and life-giving and encouraging to us, for all the ways that it influences the town and community around us, God, whether or not people come in or out of our buildings or participate in the ministries, God, we believe that you use us as a force for good in this place and a witness for justice. And so we thank you for Aldersgate, uh, now getting near 60 years old, and what it has meant to people across generations in this town. God, we ask that you would continue to bless uh, this church and these people as we witness to your love and reality in the world. God, you know the prayer requests that exist in our community. You hear all the prayers. I lift to you unspoken prayers first and add to them our prayers of concern, first for those who struggle with or who are in recovery from addiction, for those with mental illness, depression, and anxiety. In particular, God, we pray for T.J. Lynch uh, this morning, a junior in high school who is struggling and ask for healing. We pray for those who are grieving loss, God, for, uh, missing loved ones. We pray for Lindy Westy, Weston and her family after her mother's diagnosis of Alzheimer's last week. We pray for Marilyn Hutton's friend Steve, who's having a valve replacement surgery soon. We pray for Robin Wilson's son, who is going to donate stem cells to a leukemia patient in Texas this week. We ask for safe travel and ask that you would help the procedure to go smoothly. God, we pray uh, with Kathleen Epstein that her brother and niece have a safe trip to California. And for Jill Wilkinson's friends, the Dennis family, for their recent losses. God, we praise you for many things in our community today, um, including uh, local student athletes and musicians, uh, the joy of the Friday night football game with the marching band performing. God, for all these opportunities for our children, we give you thanks. We thank you as well for Chrissy Tenney and the good work of the Boy Scouts, which include uh, girls as well, and that she can take this really incredible step in leadership development in her young life. We ask that you would bless Chrissy and her project at hand. 
God, finally this morning, we thank you uh, for the celebration yesterday of um, my ministry here at Aldersgate for 20 years. God, that you saw fit to bring me here and Sam here at the right time and that this place and we have grown together over many years. We ask your continued blessing, God, for wise and discerning and insightful leadership and just thank you so much for, for ordering things the way that you have. You've heard our prayers, God. Now we ask that you would hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, for celebration and thanks this morning, I'd like to thank uh, the team that put together the little reception yesterday afternoon for honoring the 20 years that Sam and I have been here. It was just so touching and I know one of the ways that I show that I love people is by working hard for them and so I feel very, very loved because I saw you working so hard to put on a lovely event. So thank you to Dee and to Beth and to SPRC and everybody who put that together. Give yourselves a hand. Shirley Duggan, yes. Thank you. That's what the 20 is about, in case you've caught it at home. I'm not sure. There are 20 years. And the joke is, by the way, the two kept turning around, and so it became the word so. And so, <laughs> so they <laughs> just say so. We were having a party, so. Anyway, that's what the 20 is for. All right. So, back over to the band. needs in earth safe keeping thanks be to god in the just reward of labor thanks will be done in the help we give our neighbor god's will be done in the worldwide task of caring for the Thanks be to God for the good we all inherit. Thanks be to God for the wonders that astound us, for the truth that will confound us. Most of all that love has found us. Thanks be to God. 